So if you saw the last video, you'll see that uh, I pretty much broke down. Um, I was really sure that this one, of all of them, was going to stay running. And the other two, if they died, I would have been able to pull them out with, with this four-wheeler. Uh, probably with all the tires locked up, this is strong enough to do that. 800 cc's is plenty. But it didn't happen. Obviously this one broke down. Um, battery died. I got a new one. So since the ATV died on me, um, I, I didn't have a few things. One, I didn't know what the voltage was. So I didn't know that the battery was actually bad. Uh, even though it was, it started up. We'll start it up now. So you had that little bit of a hesitation, um, and I don't know how far the the voltage is dropping on that. So had I had a had I had a a gauge that would tell me the voltage whenever I was starting that I could see how low that was dropping that would have gave me a really good indication that the battery is about to die now why it was dying on the trail while it was running um, it may have been getting hot I don't I still don't know for sure why why it was dying um, I have a uh, it might have just gotten hot and that's why it died and then whenever it's hot it doesn't want to start because it draws more amperage to get it started who knows so with this gauge it tells you i, I just have this loose for now but it, it tells you a few few things um tells you how much fuel you have it'll give you the rpm how many hours and your trip time your current rpm your total miles and how much you drove on uh, your trip and then your trip two and then you're back at your total engine miles or hours i'm sorry so it tells you what gear you're in it'll tell you if you're in four-wheel drive or two-wheel drive or yeah it'll tell you if you're in four-wheel drive um if there's a check engine light it'll tell you that uh there's one other thing I don't remember. It'll tell you if your bright lights are on. But that's it. It doesn't tell you your temperature of your engine. And it doesn't tell you your voltage. Two pretty important things. Uh, the other thing I wish it had was your uh, oil pressure. That's important to know too. So, so what I... Oh, I haven't got the pods yet. But I'm thinking I might... Hopefully they'll mount right here and right here on the side i think that'd look look pretty nice it should be out of the way of of everything as well so what i got was on uh, amazon it's a little two inch uh, digital display and the first one is going to be the fahrenheit um, is the water temperature sensor with the gauge. Um, most all the ones I know come with the, the temperature sensor and the gauge because they've got to be calibrated towards each other. Um, but make sure you get the Fahrenheit if you're in, uh, I guess, the United States and use Fahrenheit. Uh, or if you prefer Celsius, they have one that has the Celsius as well. Um, as you see here, this was 1719. Shipped and delivered. And then the other one, and then the other one is the um, the voltmeter, and um, anyways, as you see here, it's eighteen ninety nine. Uh, I also got some uh, two pods. They are nine ninety nine. All right, so here's the first thing we got. Um, it's kind of weird how they did the packaging. I think they, whenever they printed it, they printed it upside down. Because if you look. There's the gauge. You'd think it'd be like this with the gauge there. Huh, ah, anyways. It's, uh, you know, 
Made in China. So it comes with instructions. Um, this one is the the voltmeter. I'm pretty sure. If you can see the volt, yeah, there you go. The voltmeter. And what's kind of neat is that whenever this goes below 11.4 volts, I think. Hold on a second. 11.5 uh, volts. There's a little red dot that comes on. So it's got some instructions, obviously they're not the best, um, but pretty self-explanatory. Um, it does come with this little pigtail, uh, with this little, not pigtail, but uh, this little plug-in receptor, and you can see it has uh, red, green, and black. The only thing we're going to use is the black and the red. Uh, the red, we're going to put this to a keyed ignition source, and then obviously black is ground, and the green, um, we don't need that in this application. We'll need it in the other one, um, but we'll just uh, cut that off and tape it up, uh, so we won't have to worry about that. But black goes to ground, and then your red is going to go to a keyed ignition source, and it kind of says that in the directions. It doesn't really tell you what to do with the green, but I'm assuming they make thousands and thousands of these, and they just throw them in there. And if you need them, you need them. If you don't, then you don't. But um, here's kind of the instructions that we'll go with. And I'm assuming that is a key, <laughs> and that is a key tumbler. Not too sure, but that's kind of what I'm going with. It does have this little bracket here. So the gauge will slip into the pod. This will slip on the outside of that pod and kind of suck everything together. And then you tighten it up with these, uh, these nuts here. So um, I can't do it right now because I don't have the pods, but we'll... I might get a little bit of it done. I'll take you along for the ride. So since since this didn't come in, in Fahrenheit, I had to get another brand. It's probably the same manufacturer or whatever. So here's that same little pigtail. Red, black, and green. Uh, so on this one, I'm assuming the red's going to go to a keyed ignition. Black is going to be ground. And your green is going to go to the actual temperature sensor which is this so that's this and then this there's a couple of ways to do this so you can cut your uh, radiator hose and put a T in there and then this will fit down into that pretty simple to do um, and then there's another way which I think I'm I'm gonna try to do and that is on the thermostat housing just to the side of that there's a bolt that looks like it goes down into the coolant passageway or whatever so I'm going to take that bolt out and if there is coolant that's inside where that bolt is I'm going to slap this in there that way I'll know what the temperature is uh, before the thermostat opens up um, I would like to know that in case the thermostat is shut closed. Uh, I'll get a temperature before I realize, hey, it's overheating and spewing all over the place and yada, yada, yada. Just preventive maintenance. So, this is oil. I guess this works for oil temperature and uh, coolant. So that's pretty much it. <laughs> uh, and again, it does have the little bracket that goes on the outside that will 
clamp with the little nuts. This still has the old battery in here. And if you look up here, hang on a second. Just do that. If you look here, there's three 30 amp fuses. And the last thing I did before this thing fired up was I checked all of these through these pins here on the outside. Which, let me take one out. So if you look on the inside of that, you'll see that there's a little, a little wave. And that is basically connecting this point to this point. They have different thicknesses, and that determines how much amperage you have. So, if you test this side and you get power, and you test this side and you don't get powered, you know that it doesn't work. Obviously, if you just pull it out and you see that it's broken, you'll know that it's not connected, you're not going to get continuity. Um, let's see. So, yeah, whenever you test these, you got to test both sides. Uh, some people will just test one side, but it's a good idea to test both. Um, as well as you can get uh, your continuity tester and push put them both on both of these sides uh, and test but anyways what I had done was I tested the outsides of these and I got continuity on them I got uh, I had power on them and so I also took them out and I put you can probably see some of the uh, dielectric grease on there but I coated them up as well but yeah whenever I did that it it fired right up it's still a bad battery I didn't like I said I did get a new one I just hadn't changed it out yet so for these testing purposes um, I am just leaving this in here for now but yeah like I said I, I tested this out and it showed good um, I don't know what happened. Maybe I wiggled it. Maybe there's some... Uh, it doesn't make sense. What we need to do is come in here and we'll figure out which one of these um, is a keyed ignition source. Which means it only has power whenever the key is on. There's no power when the key is off. What a lot of people will do is either on this hose here, they'll cut it and put that T in there. Um, or they'll do it on the lower one. But, if you look right here, this bolt right here, I, I think I might be able to take that bolt out. Um, and we'll see if that, that temperature sensor will just screw right down in there. If that's the case, that's freaking awesome. Um, if not, maybe we can just um, screw into that and tap it to that temperature sensor size um, and then we can just screw that into this it's it's out of the way of everything as far as I can tell and that it'd be a pretty clean and easy fix so if for whatever reason we didn't want to use it anymore we just have to buy a new bolt and put in there good to go let me get my voltmeter and we'll come back 